Welcome to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. And thank you so much for joining us today. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we pray that you will help us to see the tragic state that we end up in when we're out of fellowship with you. In Jesus' powerful name we pray. Amen. Our text for today is found in the book of Genesis. Uh, chapter 3, verse 1 through 6. I'm reading from the English Standard Version until I say different. Okay, Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 through 6 reads, Now the serpent was more crafted than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God actually say, You shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said, to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden. Neither shall you touch it, lest ye die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Verse 6, So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of it and ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. That's the word of God for today. It's, it's important that we learn the lesson that it's dangerous, and we should heed God's words that says that we should not uh, walk or stand or sit with those that will lead us astray or pull us away from God, just as uh, uh, Satan did Adam and Eve. He pulled them away from God. See how Adam and Eve obeyed Satan instead of God? So just wanted to throw that in. How could God justly permit satanic temptation. We see in this permission not injustice, but benevolence. Since Satan fell without any external temptation, it's also possible that Adam and Eve's trial would have been basically the same as Satan, even though there had been no uh, Satan to tempt them. Take Satan out of the picture. It's possible that they would have made the same choice. A lot of times we like to blame others when without others, we most likely would have made the same choice without external influences. How, how many wives can truly say that they have never been influenced by themselves or someone close to them to disobey God? Or how many men can truly say that you have never went along with your wife while knowing that you will be in defiance of what God says? Please note that Satan's fall was permanent. While God decided to make a way for mankind to return to him. And this week, we're, we're, I, I forgot to tell you our subject. Uh, the, this week, 
They lost fellowship with God, part one. They lost fellowship with God. And we're still under the uh, umbrella of God wants to be with us. That's our series. And our topic for today is they lost fellowship with God. Now, it might be hard to not trust someone close to you. But when you have no knowledge of even a smooth talking individual, you've never met them before. That's a different story. Surely you wouldn't follow somebody that you know nothing about just because they're smooth talking. Would you? Use the mind that was in Christ Jesus for a moment, if you will, as we look at this situation. Adam and Eve found themselves in a situation where if they had looked at the outcome from the beginning, and, 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 and what I'm getting at is when we let this mind, which was in Christ Jesus, be also in us, we have the word of God. So we know the outcome from the beginning of whatever choices we make. That's why it's important for us to avail ourselves to study in God's word so that we can grow in the grace and knowledge of God. God's people perish because of a lack of knowledge, not scientific knowledge, not biological knowledge, but because of a knowledge of him and what he instructs us to do. Look at it this way. Knowing that God has this temptation as a part of his plan for Adam and Eve's lives or our lives. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 4, this is the English Standard Version, says, for I know the plan I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not evil, to give you a future and hope. And verse 2 says, in this case, or, well, well, not verse 2, but uh, I kind of got carried away and started thinking further. Uh, but uh, in, in, in other words, in this case, however, man's fall would perhaps have been without, uh, with, with what now constitutes its single mitigating circumstances. Self-originated sin would have made mankind himself a Satan. Think about it. If Satan had not been there and Adam and Eve made the choice to disobey God, they would have made themselves a Satan in essence. When God had created them in his image and in his likeness, Listen to this. Satan told Eve that the reason God told them not to eat of the forbidden tree was God knew. God is all-knowing. But remember, Satan is crafty. He says, God knew that they would become like him. A God that is all-knowing. Disobeying God would never provide them or us an opportunity to become like him without his work on our behalf. We could never become holy without the help of a holy God. Whenever someone tries to persuade you to do something that they make out to be 
a smart move, we should always ask ourselves, where did that get them? Such temptation in itself is no tendency to lead the soul astray. If the soul is holy, temptation may only confirm it in virtue. Only the evil person will by themselves decide to go against God. Only an evil person will decide to go against God especially when they realize that their decision can turn temptation into an occasion of their own ruin. Judas's decision to sell Jesus out was a bad decision that led to his own ruin. As the sun's heat has no, no tendency to wither a plant's rooted in deep and more soil, but only to cause it to send its roots down deeper and to fasten itself strongly so that temptation has in itself no tendency to pervert the soul. So in other words, God can use the temptation to make us stronger. The same temptation which seeks to ruin the false prophets or disciples stimulated sturdy growth of virtue in true Christians. Contrast with temptation uh, of Adam and the temptation of Jesus. Put them side by side and notice the difference. Adam was led to go against God while Jesus was obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Adam had everything uh, to uh, plead for God. He had, he had it made. He had everything that he needed to even praise God. He had the Garden of Eden all of its delight, contrast that with what Jesus had, had everything to plead against God. The wilderness and its, mil its miseries. But Adam had confidence in Satan while Jesus Christ had confidence in God. And the results was in the former case a defeat. And in the latter case, in Jesus' case, it was victory. How could a penalty so great be justly connected with disobedience to so slight a command? Of all the trees of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat thereof. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So slight a command presented the best test of the spirit of obedience. And then the external command was not arbitrary or insignificant in its substance. It was a concrete presentation to the human will. And God's claim to eminent domain total right, absolute ownership should have caused Adam and Eve to question Satan's motives the same way it caused Jesus to question Satan's motives when Satan showed up to tempt him. The sanction attached to the command shows that man was not left ignorant of its meaning or importance. The act of disobedience was therefore the revelation of a will thoroughly corrupted and alienated from God, a will that was given over 
to ingratitude, unbelief, ambition, rebellion. The motive of disobedience was not appetite, but the it, 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 it was not something trying to, to meet an appetite, but it was trying to meet the ambition to be as God. The outward act of eating the forbidden fruit was only the thin edge of the wedge. Behind it lies the whole mass, the fundamental determination to isolate itself and to seek personal pleasure regardless of God and his law. That's what the... That's what's behind the decisions that we're making. So often when we make the wrong decision. So, the man under conviction for sin commonly clings to some single pa passion or plan. Only half conscious of the fact that opposition to God is one thing, in one thing is opposition to all that God stands for. Just as the law, if you break the least of them, you're guilty of them all. So only have consciousness of the fact that the opposition to God in one thing is opposition in all. We must always remember that God wants to be with us even now as his Holy Spirit lives in us and through us. Jesus died so that we can be holy and justified and sanctified and identify with God as his children. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus died one Friday on an old rugged cross on a hill called Calvary or Golgotha. And then they buried him in a borrowed tomb. But early, don't forget that. Early the third day morning, early Sunday morning, he rose with all power in heaven and in earth in his hand. Power to transform us back into the image and likeness of God, our creator. In that form, we can have the same mind that was in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's close with prayer. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for your mercy and grace that takes from us what we deserve and gives to us what we don't deserve. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Again, thank you so much for joining us this uh, day uh, that the Lord has made. Uh, thank you for joining the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, don't forget to click the subscribe button. And that way you'll be notified each time we upload something new. Again, thank you so much for joining us. And see you next time. Be safe. Bye-bye.